Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Gio, and uh, today we're doing chapter 19 for White Silk Lover. Thursday, May 2nd, 11 a.m. Kobe's point of view. Dr. Garnier wanted another essay on a randomly picked composer. She had an old hat filled with name. Just my luck. I drew someone I've heard of this time, Giuseppe Verde. I'm in the student building, sitting at one of the tables, waiting for Conrad and Kelly. My left hand felt off. The fingers tripped on each other, whether I used a piano or a laptop. It doesn't ache. It simply doesn't move right. The recital is in one week. It's all I practice these days, at least as much as my hand will let me. It's a big deal. The university has one, and only one, donor recital every year. Black tie and tux required. I could barely afford a tux. Out of the entire music program, only 20 students are selected to perform. They are amazingly good. Tomas kind of good. I can't understand why Dr. Garnier asked me to participate. Some of the students involved practice upwards of four hours a day. My left hand ached after one, sometimes a lot less than an hour. Usually I iced it and it's fine the next day, but it's affecting my fingers with other activities, typing being one. I become very good at one finger typing. Sometimes when I catch you at Bixby's, I can't use my left hand on the pad and holding simple things is getting harder. The other 19 students are much better than me. Why am I even at college? How did I survive the last few years? Being alone is hard. If Tomas knew how much I needed our nightly talks, he'd think I was crazy. A group of chattering girls walked past, gossiping about some class. Sometimes, I wish I could do that, just chatter. Someday, I want somebody to just chatter with. I want to be back on Platinum with Tomas and never leave. The real world is too hard. My phone vibrates with an incoming text. Kelly and Conrad can't make it. I'm tempted to call Tomas, but right now he's with his vocal coach. With my right hand, I opened my laptop and waited for it to connect to the student center Wi-Fi. It's an older model laptop, one I'd found in a pawn shop. The battery holds a charge for 15 minutes, not like it once did, and I've covered the scratches and dents with stickers, but I can still write papers and music with it. I don't save to the hard drive anymore, but to the cloud. I'm afraid one of these times it won't turn on. It does this time and I head to the auction site, curtain call 234 used. Another new listing. A single piece of paper with notes scribbled across song lyrics. I enlarged it, read it, and read it again. My eyes are suddenly wet, and I wiped them with my right hand. That's our paper, from our first date, a month ago. The song about a man falling in love with another man, and finally getting together with him in the last verse. It's billed as an unfinished song that Sterling wrote on a napkin in a nightclub in Vegas. It's in Tomas's handwriting and mine. Somebody ripped my lungs out and I couldn't breathe. It's an ancient version. The song has gone through so many changes that this paper is obsolete. But why would it be here? Better question, how would it be here? And who would take it? Only six people even knew about it. My throat constricted and my mouth went dry. It's only going for a hundred so far, but the auction ended in an hour. As my screen refreshed, it jumped up fifty dollars. And then another fifty. It's a popular item. That paper was ours, no one else's. How dare someone steal it? That was our first date. I shoot the link to Tomas, even though he won't get it until later. 
I blow the anger out and watch the price rise again. Tomas and I had worked on it together. It was our song. Well, Tomas's, but I helped. How many nights had we worked on it, tapping out syllables or humming melodies? I played it so much I memorized it. I could buy it if it didn't get too expensive. What would Tomas do? If he wanted, he would buy it and not even blink. For me, it was rapidly becoming a lot of money. I had an hour to decide if my future was worth a piece of paper or not. Thursday, April 29th, 9.30 a.m. Tomas. One more day and Kobe would be here. We'd have time to ourselves. In between all the regular Sterling stuff, he can't get here soon enough. It's only been a month, and I can't believe the difference I feel. I'm still trapped, but I found someone I can be me with. Kobe will love this weekend. I will love this weekend. We haven't been together since our time on Platinum. And even though we talk every night, being together is better. After Texas, we will travel up to Lincoln, Nebraska, and we'll finish the tour in Chicago. Then it's time off for good behavior before I make the rounds promoting my new album, like talk shows and web channels. The first music video from the album has already hit the internet but the response isn't what it would have been a couple of albums ago. Tomorrow night will be incredible. The official debut of my new album is always a nice change. Why Lincoln? It just happened to be the next spot on the tour. We get to work the kinks out of the new songs, adjust the concert a little, and then we have a huge blowout celebration in Chicago and hopefully sell a million albums within a week. L.A. or New York would have been better, but sometimes you have to go with what works. It's also a sign that I'm sinking on the charts. The career of a teenage idol ended when he can no longer pass as 20. I have two concerts scheduled this weekend, one on Saturday, the other Sunday. Then Monday, it's off to Chicago. The tour is almost done, and I can't wait. Kobe's recital is next week. My final concert is a week from Sunday. And maybe we can take a week together and go somewhere. Hawaii? Bahamas? Cabo? Maybe a quiet bed and breakfast in Maine where we can eat pancakes and sleep? Or maybe the platinum is free again? The morning meeting ended and it's off to the vocal coach where the, while the crew gets the hotel's convention hall set up. Kobe shot me a text and a link. I don't have time to read. Lunchtime. Everything's ready for tomorrow night. I want it. No, I need it to be perfect. Because Kobe deserves it. This tour might be my last time at Sterling Lock. Thursday, April 29th, 12 noon. Kobe. Five minutes left until the auction closed. It's at a thousand. I could afford it if I used part of my tuition money. Make that 1100 and climbing. The bus pulled up at Bixby's Electronics and I ran to the store. I'm working later tonight to make up for leaving early tomorrow. As I hurried in, I set my laptop on the break room table, opened it, and checked the auction. 1600 It jumped $500 in minutes? Three minutes left. 1900 I should let the auction slide. We've already rebuilt the song far past this version. We don't need the paper. 2300 But the page represents what Tomas and I have between us. Two minutes. 2500 I called Tomas, but only got a recording. Three grand? One minute to go. My heart pounded. Sweat covered my palms. I shouldn't do this. Thirty seconds before the auction ended, I placed my bid. It's way too much money. If I win, I'll have to figure out how to afford tuition next semester. And food. And bills. The auction ended. I waited for the screen to refresh. Fifteen seconds dragged by. The screen refreshed. 
$3,700. I won. Crap. Curtain Call 234 is watching because I got an email only seconds after the auction had closed. I have the option of choosing next day delivery for an extra hundred. I take it because I'm flying to Nebraska. Now what do I do? I send back my contact information, and when I check the account, my tuition money is gone. I've got seven dollars left in my bank account. The disappointment settled in my intestines like concrete, and I don't think I'll eat ever again. I can't afford little things like food until payday. That was stupid of me. But that paper was important. It's been the best month of my life, and it began with that paper. It also means that I won't graduate in a year. Maybe if I get another job, but then I won't have time to practice or go to the gym. What do I tell Tomas? Guess what? I just traded my diploma for a worthless piece of paper. What have I done? My boss has me hauling boxes of DVDs in, in from the delivery truck, and then they need help bringing more flat screens in and computers. I took the bus to Club Diggory for a short practice. How can I tell Tomas about this? Should I even tell him? As I played, my left arm tightened and my fingers spasmed. A sharp pain throbbed from my fingers up to my elbow. It's never done that before. I cut practice 30 minutes short and head home to ice my hand. Piano is my life. What's wrong with my hand? Hopefully, aspirin and an ice pack will take care of it. Thursday, April 29th, 6 p.m., local time. Tomas. Who do I sign this for? I said, in Sterling's accent, to a teen with curly hair and braces. I don't have a concert tonight, but instead I'm at a store, All Star Media, in full Sterling costume, signing autographs and early release CDs. I've been in a million selfies. That's one of my favorite songs, too, I say, this time to a girl with dark skin, dark short hair, and a nose ring. The crowd is hundreds big, maybe even thousands, and they have a table in the back just for me. A giant poster of my face is behind me, as well as a large promotional poster of the CD cover. I don't have just one bodyguard. I have ten. Outside, there is a police presence for crowd control. An older woman with three copies of my CD approached. They're probably gifts for her grandchildren. It's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. A couple TV stations have reporters and cameras, and they are interviewing random people in line. We must have sold several hundred CDs, and I've gone through ten Sharpies, and there is no end to it. Thank you. I like the new jackets, too. A high school girl can't stop jumping as she talked to me. She reminded me of Kobe. The noise? Deafening. Imagine a baseball stadium filled with screaming teens and cram them all into one store. Thank you, I said to a girl who mumbled through some sort of headpiece. I can't understand her, but she's so excited she could pass out. Next time I sing that song, I'm singing it for you. This is the fun part of the job. Sterling gets to casually flirt a little, speak a lot, talk with everybody, and I actually enjoy it. It's mostly girls and college girls and 20-something girls and a couple of moms. But every so often, some guy braves the crowd. They're usually college age, shy, almost embarrassed, so much like Kobe. I can't wait to call him tonight. The next person in line is a tall, skinny guy with a dozen zits on his face. Thank you, Mr. Locke. I'm learning to sing, just like you. Good for you. Who do I make it out to? Eli. Well, Eli, I quickly signed a CD but added good luck on it. I hope to hear your work on the radio someday. Jerry shuffled them through fast. Less as well. A bunch of the crew were coordinating the crowd, and it's more or less smooth. No, I don't plan on wearing them again, I said, responding to another quick question. Those mesh shirts can get a bit drafty. A group of girls stepped up, and I signed a poster, a t-shirt, and some CDs. My band was here as well, and a lot of the kids were trying to get their CDs signed by all of us. 
except Sam never showed up. He was supposed to be here an hour or two ago. He's the drummer, and everybody wanted to meet the drummer. Except Eli. He's with Javier. Eli has one of the custom guitar picks and is holding it like it's gold. Both he and Javier were smiling for a selfie. Who do I make it out to? I refocused on my line. And so it goes, and I am loving it. Being with the people is more high energy than on the stage, and I need another pen. Jerry approached me. We have 30 minutes. Pick up the pace. I'm approaching my second hour, and I could go longer, but not today. It's off to an interview at a radio station after this, then a TV interview for the news tonight. Somewhere, I hope I can have dinner. I speed sign, and by the end, I'm exhausted, and my hand won't release the pen. I think I've seen everybody and set a new world record at the same time. Any idea how many people we saw? I asked Jerry as I stretched my fingers. Enough to sell 700 CDs, Jerry said. Eli and Javier were still chatting. Why do I remember his name out of all the others? Because, in a weird way, he reminds me of Kobe, and I can't wait to call Kobe. Let's get you out of here, Jerry said, taking me by the arm. We're running late. Albert's brought the car to the back, and Joey gave the all clear. Sauntering in through the main doors, Sam finally showed up. Not in t-shirt and shorts or jeans like most of the others, but dark slacks, a pale yellow silk button-down shirt, and a fitted tweed jacket. We've seen everything everybody packed for this tour. After all, we've been with each other for nine months, and Sam has never dressed like this. The clothes must be new. Maya ran a hand across his shoulders. Somebody's looking sexy. You have a date tonight? No, I just like dressing better than anyone here, Sam said. That's the right thing to say if you want to insult Maya. Maya is a sweet thing that takes pride in how she dressed. She's like everybody's sister, making sure we all looked good. You missed the signing. Where have you been? Les yelled. He laid his clipboard on the table and pinched the bridge of his nose with thumb and forefinger. I had some things to take care of, Sam said. What? This is your job, and you've been shopping, Les said. What's the problem, Sam said. You don't need me for one of these. Tomas is the superstar millionaire money-making machine. Maya stood close to Sam, arms crossed, and sniffed. Is that beer? Have you been drinking? Lindsay stepped up to them and said, Drunk again? The tour ends a week from Sunday. We're almost done. Can't you keep it together for a few more days? Sam smirked. Why don't you yell at Tomas? He's on the phone all night and slept through half of the meeting this morning. Pick on him, not me. I did not sleep through the meeting, I said, and you would have known that if you had been to the meeting. Javier blew a breath out and strode up to us. Tomas talks to his boyfriend every night. I talk to my wife. So what? At least he was at the meeting, and rehearsal, and his workouts, and at the signing, and he's not drunk. God, I'm exhausted talking about his schedule. He doesn't have time to drink, Maya muttered. Tomas talks to his boyfriend every night, Sam said, mimicking Javier. Well, the rest of us have lives, too. I left Jerry and stood by my brother. One of the crew shoot Eli out of earshot, and a couple of others. Sam's breath stank of beer. When I'm dressed like this, it's sterling. You've been drinking while we have work to do. Go do it, then. I'm not stopping the great and almighty Tomas. Sam, what's going on, I said. Jerry grabbed my arm again. We don't have time for this. You're late for the radio interview. Come on. It's always you, Sam yelled. Every time. It's always you. And I'm tired of it. God's gift to the music world. You can't do anything wrong. Javier took Sam by the shoulders. We're done here. Let's get you back to the hotel and some strong coffee. Lindsay took Sam's other arm. You have to remember, we are Sterling Locke's band. Not Sam Blake's, not mine, not Tomas's. We're all the same. Then why does my brother get millions while we get paychecks? Doesn't that bother you? Sam yelled. No. Have you seen his schedule? Javier said. Even worse, have you seen what he eats all the time? Poor Kobe's a vegan. 
and has to kiss that mouth. Sterling is perfect. Tomas can't do anything wrong. And now there's little wonder boyfriend, Kobe. Sam, you can't work as hard as Kobe. He goes to the stupid gym and has a stupid job and getting a stupid music degree from, from, from some stupid university, Sam slurred. Jerry didn't let me have time to get angry because he pushed me to the limo. We climbed inside and Albert took us to the radio station. Les just told me that Kobe is coming tomorrow night, Jerry said. Do you know how much trouble he could cause? You should have told me. Then you would have tried to talk me out of it, I said, adjusting my wig a little. I demand that you cancel his trip. Once the tour is over, you visit him in secret. Sterling Locke has a reputation that you must stick with. Jerry, I said, mind your own business. I'm just saying that you can't afford to take chances, and a relationship with the wrong person could destroy you, Jerry said. Cancel his trip. No, I said. He's coming. He's going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy being with him, and I don't want to hear another word about it. For the rest of the trip, we ignored each other. I pulled up the link Colby had sent me. Our paper from Club Diggory had been on auction today, and somebody bought it. Six people had been there the night we rewrote part of that song. Kelly, Conrad, and Kobe were in Vegas. Albert, Joey, and me were in the car right now. I took a seat next to the privacy window and lowered it. Do you need something? Joey said, smiling mischievously. She gave me a wink. A couple of thongs for tomorrow? No, I said. When I didn't smile, her mouth flattened, and she became all business. Something happened, Albert said. Jerry sat up by the window next to me. I showed Joey my phone in the link. Look familiar? Joey took the phone and zoomed in on the paper. What is it? Joey asked. The first song I worked with Kobe on, I said. Curtain Call 234 sold it today. Kobe and I worked on it back in Vegas at a place called Club Diggory. Only six of us were there, Albert said. Then one of the six is Curtain Call 234, Jerry said. Who are they? Me and Kobe, his friends Kelly and Conrad, I said. And us, Joey said. It's a short list. Let me tell you my side of the story. I'm listening, I said. That night, Albert said, we were waiting at the car while you and Kobe were talking. It gave us a chance to talk about us. About our relationship, Joey said. We didn't get too far before our waiter ran out and gave us the paper. I folded it up and put it in my purse. We all got kind of distracted that night, so I forgot about it. Distracted is a good word for it, I said. Jerry read through the paper. You and Kobe wrote a song about two men. Do you know what this could do to your career? Actually, Albert said, Tomas wrote it, and Kobe helped him with it. Joey, Albert, why did you sell it? Jerry asked. Blackmail? We didn't, Joey said. I forgot I had it until after we left Albuquerque. Then I set it with the papers in the dressing room. I left a note because you were off doing something. I thought the issue closed. How can I believe you? Jerry asked. I was an MP back in the Army, Joey said. If I stole from anybody, it would destroy my reputation and I wouldn't be hired. Some things are more important than a couple thousand bucks. Where's the paper now? Albert asked. Does it say anything about who bought it? It's all confidential, I said. This is a disaster, Jerry said. There's a potential blackmail paper out there, and you invite your boyfriend to the party? I hope you're proud of yourself. Because at the rate you're going, there won't be a sterling lock anymore. None of you say any of this to Kobe, I said. I want him to have fun this weekend. Understood? Shouldn't be a problem, Albert said. I'll keep him safe, Joey said. Jerry, I asked. Jerry took a deep breath and stared out the window. I don't like this, but I won't say anything to Kobe. Les needs to know, though. Tell him, Joey said, but only him. Let's keep it secret for now. Jerry took another look at the picture on my phone and scowled. I still think inviting Kobe out here is a mistake. Let your hormones think on this. I know you didn't mean to, but you've invited Kobe into ground zero of this mess. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to call Monica and see if she's learned anything. We all sat back, quiet. 
My phone buzzed with a text from Maya. Guess what I found? Is it real? She'd found the website and the song. I texted back. How do you attach a squealer to a piece of paper?